Hello and welcome to Mukoya Finance. My name is Zara Dean and I'll be your tutor in this class. In this tutorial, I'll introduce the concept of financial markets, what they are, why they exist, the major players in a financial market, as well as record keeping in financial markets. Understanding financial markets begins with the understanding of the basic economic concept of demand and supply. This concept shows the relationship between two parties, a seller who has a product or a service and wants to sell at a certain price and a buyer who needs the product and is willing to pay that price for it. For example, let's assume that Ben has a product and wants to sell it for $100 and Pires needs the same product and is willing to pay $100 for it. The two of them agree to meet and make their exchange and the transaction is complete. Note, these types of transactions happen millions of times daily. Pires might also be in need of another product which Ben doesn't have and therefore has to look for someone who has the product and is willing to sell. For this reason, a marketplace exists where buyers and sellers meet to carry out their transactions. This type of market is called the goods market. Just like the demand and supply of goods and services, people sometimes need money to meet immediate needs, while others have money that they are willing to invest or lend over a period of time for a certain return. Here, the same concept of demand and supply applies. However, while in the goods market this is a one-time transaction, in this type of market, the borrower has to pay back the lender his money and the investee has to keep paying dividends to the investor. To understand this better, let's see a practical example. Suppose Mr. Ismo here, who's an environmentalist, wants to start a company to produce solar panels. The first thing he did was to determine how much money he needed to run his factory for one year, and this is what he came up with. The land and building he wishes to acquire for his operation costs $2,000. He also has to pay $500 for utility. And then he needs $1,500 for furniture and fittings. He also needs $1,000 to purchase raw materials. And finally, he needs $5,000 to meet general and administrative expenses. In total, Mr. Ismo needs $10,000 to start his business. However, he only has $2,000 of savings. So he needs an additional $8,000. So he goes to his family members and presents this beautiful idea and asks them for financial support. Some of his family members are convinced that this business venture will be profitable and decided to invest $3,000 in exchange for 30% ownership of the company. Now he has $5,000 to start the business and this is the equity in the business, also known as owner's equity or shareholder's equity. Next he approaches his friends and asks them for a loan with the promise of paying them back with additional 10%. After reaching out to 50 of his friends, 10 of them decided to loan him $500 each and expect to be paid back $550 as promised. This sums up to $5,000 in borrowed funds and represents the liability in the business. Now he has the $10,000 he needs for the business, which is $5,000 in equity and $5,000 in liabilities. This total amount is currently in cash and represents the assets of the business. Assets can be in cash or other forms. For example, if he decided to use $2,000 to buy machinery, then his assets will be $8,000 in cash and $2,000 in machinery. If he also buys raw materials worth $3,000, then his assets is $5,000 in cash, $2,000 in machinery, and $3,000 in raw materials. Therefore, assets are equal to liabilities plus equity, and this is the basis for the balance sheet equation. However, there is inefficiency in the amount of time, effort and costs that Ismo had to incur to reach out to 50 different people. Is there an easier way? Financial markets exist to enable borrowers and lenders transact in an efficient manner through regulated institutions which collect money from those who have excess and are willing to lend or invest for a return and give it to those who want to borrow and are willing to pay a return on the borrowed funds. If Ismo had reached out to one financial institution, say a bank, he might have gotten the total $5,000 for a relatively lower return, say 5%. The major players in a financial market include borrowers, lenders, and financial intermediaries. Households, firms, governments, and foreigners can be lenders as well as borrowers in the financial markets. 
Financial intermediaries include commercial banks, investment banks, and pension funds. These institutions act as middlemen between two parties in a financial transaction. A borrower or lender can either go directly to the financial markets to borrow or lend or do so through a financial intermediary. To promote integrity in the financial markets, entities like firms are required to keep record of their day-to-day -day activities and make them public at certain periods of time for current and potential investors and lenders to use and determine the strength and viability of the company while making investment and lending decisions. In the next set of videos, I'll show you how these entities keep record of their day-to-day -day activities and present them through a set of financial statements, namely the Statement of Financial Position, also known as the Balance Sheet, the Statement of Comprehensive Income, also known as the Income Statement, Statement of Cash Flows, and Statement of Changes in Equity. And this brings us to the end of this video segment. If I have in any way made you understand financial markets better, please hit the subscribe button and follow my channel in your quest towards becoming a finance expert. See you in the next video.